Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 25th in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to carry on from where we left off last episode. Last episode we created the file, uh, sorry, the file which will save our actual um, data. This episode we're going to do the other half which is load that actual data back into Unity. So I'm going to do this in the title screen because this is where we usually have our load button. So to make things a little bit easier, what I'm going to do after we've written the script as well is I'm going to get rid of those temporary buttons that we created in our title screen. I'm going to put some more advanced GUI in. It makes it look nicer, sleeker, and it's easier to use as well. So let's start by going to our scripts folder and right click, create script, and let's call this something simple like load and new. So this particular script is going to be, contain uh, three different functions and those three different functions are going to represent our buttons on the uh, title screen. So once you're loaded in Mon Develop or Visual Studio, delete everything you've got and we're going to start by declaring um, three functions. We're going to do this similar to how we did the saving the game but one thing to mention as well I have taken out the second right line that we did. Um, I figured for this tutorial it'd be easier doing one line at a time just so we understand what's going on. So my save file, this save game.data, now consists of just saving the game. Just that one line. So what we'll do is we need to declare our first variable, which is going to be that file name. So var file name, I'm keeping that the same as last time, equals save data, sorry, save game dot data, semicolon. The next two variables are going to be strings. Now, I can't remember if I've explained this before, a string is a text only variable. So you can have numbers in there, but they will be stored as text, i.e., you couldn't multiply a string by three if it was only numbers. You would have to do a conversion from a string to an integer or float or whatever. So var load code. So we need to load the code in and we need to store it in this one. That's going to be string. That's capital S on string. The next variable is going to be a string again, but we need to reference this particular variable in other scripts within the game. So that's going to be a static var. Let's call this global load. And again, string with a capital S. So as I say, it's going to be three functions, and we're actually going to start with the load game function. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so we'll go in and we'll just call it load game, I think. Function, load game, open close bracket, open curly bracket. So if you remember last time as well, we had an extra variable just below our function called our file. So I'm going to use that again. So var our file. And this variable is going to be stated a little bit differently to how it was in the previous. This is going to be something called stream reader. So stream reader equals new stream reader open bracket and then your variable called file name. File name. Now the reason we have stream reader is because it needs to read um, what's called a stream within the file. So we need to read the line that's in there. But we also need to declare a couple of lines in this script which will enable us to see what lines there are. So firstly, what we have to do is we do line equals, and it's gonna be um, our file, dot read line open close bracket semicolon 
So now we need to do a while statement. Now a while statement is a way of saying while such a condition is true, you should perform the following lines of code. So we can do that by doing while, then open bracket, and we need line exclamation mark equals null, not null, null, close bracket, open curly bracket. So while it's not empty, what we need to do is we need to make load code equal to line, semicolon, and then we need to make line equal to our file dot read line open close bracket semicolon and then we need to close that while loop next thing we need to do our file dot close so we need to close the file and the final thing we need to do is make the load code sorry the global load string equal to the load code string. So global load equals lo um, load code semicolon and close. Now one thing that might actually be easier, um, just thinking about it as we've been typing, um, I think it might be easy to have four functions in this. So where we've put function load game, let's actually change this to start because we can then see this script actually working. And we can create another function called load game. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take that out there and put it in here. You'll see why I've done that in just a second. So save that script as it is. Make sure you've got your two functions, your function start and your function load game. Head back to Unity. Hopefully we won't get any errors on this one. No, nope, everything looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and go new game object, create empty. I'm going to right click, rename and call this title button new. I'm going to drag and drop, load a new onto there. Now hopefully when we press play, because our function starts straight away, we should see our load code appear just there. And there we go. So now Unity has brought in that data that's in the file. So for example, if let's say this file contained a load of gibberish, you'd save a load of gibberish, it would bring in that as well. So you could put literally anything in there and it will bring that straight into Unity. So then we can use that data to pinpoint what we're going to do. So I'm just going to put, what, what do we have this saved as, sorry? It was saving the game, wasn't it? So I'm going to put that back as saving the game and save that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this title buttons object, which was the temporary buttons that we put in a couple of tutorials ago. And I'm going to double click on my canvas to get it into a nice position. And I'm going to import, uh, sorry, insert some new buttons. So game object, UI, button. Uh, I want to make sure the anchor point is dead center. And I'm going to zero out the position. I'm going to use this end tool here just to align it to a point that I like. So about there, I think. Yep, that looks fine. And then if you click the little arrow in the hierarchy, you'll see the text. And you can edit what the text says. Let's put new game. Let's change the font. Let's have it bold. Let's have the size as 20. Let's have the color as blue. So you can play around with them settings there on the button to make it look a little bit more fitting towards your style of game. And I'm going to duplicate that button 
and I'm going to drag it down. And you've probably guessed by now, I'm going to change the text on it to say load game. And I'm going to change that to red, just to be a bit different. And one last time, control D. And let's change this to quick game. And I'm going to put that to, I don't know, purple. And let's drag it down. In, oops, drag the actual button, not just the text. To about there. So I'll right click, rename, let's call this new game. Next button, right click, rename, load game. And finally, yeah, you guessed it, quick game. So now what we need to do, we've got our three buttons and we only have two functions and we need four functions in total. So let's create another function. Let's call this the quick game one. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And it is going to be pretty much the same as what we put for our temporary GUI. So application.quit can go in the function quick game. Close bracket. And the last one is going to be the new game. So function, new game, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And it's going to be the same as what we had in our temporary, which is that application.load level one. So you can copy and paste that straight into there. And save. So what we'll do now is we will assign those functions to these buttons. So if we go to our new game button, over here in the inspector pane, down here you've got on click, list is empty. So let's click on the plus button and let's drag and drop title button new into this box here. Make sure you are selected on runtime only and then click on no function and then click on load and new, which is the script that we have. And since we're on new game, we need to select new game. So what this means is that when this button's pressed, it will run that particular function and only that function. So load game, yet again, it is the same. Drag and drop, runtime only, function, new and load, and let's click on load game. And lastly, yeah, you probably guessed it, you've done it twice before now, so you can do this pretty quick and quick game. So let's save our uh, game there. And let's try out these buttons. Now, obviously, as we already know, the quick game won't work because it's not its own individual standalone exe file. It is the engine, so that won't work. However, new game will. So if you click new game, it will load up that new game. And if we click load game, it will work, but we theoretically won't see anything at the moment simply because we haven't told it to do anything. All we've told it to do is just make global load equals load code. So if we also make um, this bit of code there, what it will do is instead of just creating a new game, it will create the static variable with the actual load code in there and then load the second scene. So what this means is that if we go back to our main area, it means that when we load this up, we can have another object with multiple different um, variables in saying that if this code is equal to load area one, for example, we can place our character in certain points make certain things unavailable anymore, and so whatever else, multiple different things. But we'll go into that in the next tutorial. So the next next tutorial, sorry, will be based on loading our character with different aspects using this code we've brought in. And we'll probably also look at actually picking up our weapon rather than already starting with it. So to give you a bit of an example, we start straight away, we have our ax, however, I don't want to start with the axe, so I want to walk all the way over here into the village and pick up the axe off the table over there or something. So we'll do that next tutorial as well. So until then, I, I recommend 
been on title screen and playing around with these buttons and making them exactly how you want. We may go into a bit more detail in a later tutorial when we do some more GUI and we'll see how that goes. So until then, thank you very much for watching.